It's been referred to as the last Western manhunt, a two-week-long trek across the deserts of Riverside in San Bernardino counties back in 1909. The pursuers were the members of a posse organized in Banny. Their goal? To bring back a Native American Paiute descent known only as Willie Boy, dead or alive. What the hell does he want to go to Palm Springs for? What's he got there? A bunch of lungers living in tents and some Indians he don't know? God damn it, he should be headed to 29 Palms where he can get help. He should be heading up the Dry Morongo Pass. One version of the Willie Boy story was released to moviegoers in 1969, titled Tell Them Willie Boy Is Here. It starred Robert Redford as a fictionalized lawman tracking the armed fugitive, played by Robert Blake, across the desert. Tell them Willie Boy is here! Much like the film, the actual story began with a tragedy on September 26, 1909, a tragedy fueled by a forbidden love. Willie Boy loved a Native American girl named Carlotta. Her family had moved to Banning to work the fruit harvest. They were extended cousins, but they were from the same bloodline. Carlotta's father, William Mike, also known as Old Mike Boniface, was a spiritual leader and a medicine man. He was opposed to the relationship, historian Kenneth Gentry explains. He basically found his daughter with Willie Boy up in 29 Palms and told Willie Boy never to see her again, took her away. He wasn't ever allowed to look at Carlotta ever again. And about a month later, Willie Boy followed him down to Banning and then showed up at his house at night. There are no witnesses to confirm what happened next. It is believed that Willie Boy went to ask Carlotta's hand in marriage. But before the night was over, old Mike Boniface was dead with a bullet through his left eye, and Willie Boy and Carlotta were on the run. In all sincerity, it was probably a murder. He took a rifle to go get a girl, which is to say somebody died at the end, but uh, Mike's wife waited 9 to 12 hours before she actually reported it to the police, which leads one to believe that if it was a murder, it was at least accidental, which is to say a lot of people... A lot of people will say that she did that because she was fearing Willie Boy. Uh, just as many people will say that she did that to give them a head start. The Indian man wanted to marry a daughter. It wasn't uncommon for the young man to kill the father. Yeah, we're on the reservations, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but the problem was they got inside the Banning city limits. And that brought the white man's law into it. So from Banning, a posse was organized. Originally, it was a sheriff. It was two Indians who were working as guides. Um, it was just a small group of people who were right there at the time, set out after him. After a couple of days, it doubled, and then after a couple of weeks, it ended up, as I said, well over 200. During one encounter with the posse, Carlotta died of a gunshot wound. Whether the bullet was fired by Willie Boy or one of the deputies is still unclear to this day. She was shot from about 300 yards behind and above. If Willie Boy had shot her, her. He would have been face to face. It would have been an intimate act if you ask me. He definitely would have shot her in the back and, and furthermore, if he did, I, I really doubt that the posse wouldn't have heard that shot and then found her warm body, which is to say someone shot her with a rifle in the back and it's believed that it was one of the posse members. Grandpa said she was shot through her breast from the back. He says, well, it would have been impossible for the posse to do it because they wouldn't shoot at anything that they couldn't see the whole body, including the head, because they were trying to shoot Willie Boy in the head. There are few more familiar with the Willie Boy legend than Morgan Reesh. His grandfather, Deputy Charles Reesh, took a bullet during the ordeal. Willie Boy shot, I think it was three horses out from under the posse with a rifle. He's trying to put the posse afoot. Grandpa always said he wasn't shooting at him. He was intending to get his horse. He shot high, shooting a 30-30 with open size 300 yards and hit him in the right hip bone. And his handcuffs, he was a deputy sheriff, his handcuffs turned the bullet. Instead of going straight to it, took the top of this hip bone off and the point of two vertebrae. Well, when I talked to my grandpa about it, I said, did it hurt when you got shot? He says, yeah, it felt like somebody knocked me off my horse with a two by six. Charlie Ricci was shot and they had to basically disband and get back to help. Uh, at that point, there were so many people wanting to hunt Willie Boy down. They, they chose to wait a week before they went back out to look for him, which is very awkward in the first place. With so many people gearing up to go, waiting a week is just 
confusing to me. The nearly 600-mile chase came to a close on October 15th at Ruby Mountain near Landers. This is where deputies found a body believed to be that of Willie Boys. It was decided that the cause of death was suicide since his body wasn't brought back. Some historians have questioned the details around Willie Boy's death or if he was even actually dead. The body didn't show any signs of having decomposed in the desert like a body would, which is to say, first of all, animals hadn't just taken his body away. His shirt was still tucked in, his overalls were still over. They didn't have a clear shot of his face, and even if he had decomposed for a month, at the time, the, the, the practice was to show off your kill. Um, any other posse would have had numerous photos with him. Not only did they not photograph his body properly, but then they burned it on site immediately, which, again, too many questions. We took a shovel up there and we sifted the dirt, and we found all the hardware off of the bib overalls he wore, and fragments of teeth and everything. If he got away, I don't know how come we found fragments of teeth in when we screened the sand and found all that hardware off of his clothes that he was wearing. But if it wasn't Willie Boy's body that was found that day, then what happened to Willie Boy? There's plenty of stories that go on to say that he retired and uh, lived for a long time uh, in Nevada and died of tuberculosis. Without official proof of death, some imaginative reporters speculate about Willie Boy to sell more newspapers. One such story involved President William Howard Taft, who was on a railroad tour of Southern California at the time. Uh, basically, the idea was that Willie Boy was going to assassinate the president. <laughs> just because he happened to be running from a posse during the same time that the president would have been in the same area, general area. San Bernardino was a huge county. Some organizers politicized the Willie Boy manhunt to serve their needs, such as some temperance groups who used the drunken Indian racial stereotype to push for prohibition. One, one comment basically got alcohol into the situation and it turned him into a violent drunk. Um, I'm sure he had some alcohol in his lifetime, but I doubt that it was a factor in this case. And now that it's been more than a century since the manhunt, and whether this fugitive from justice was a folk hero or a cold-blooded killer, is still up for debate. But if anyone could inquire about the last man who was killed in San Bernardino, it was that man, Willie Boy. I don't see him as a hero, and I definitely don't see him as a cold-blooded murderer. I think he was in love with maybe the wrong person, and circumstances just didn't, he just had a very bad hand.